members of the press. Uh, how are you this morning? My name is Alan Brown. I am the standard bearer of the Liberia Restoration Party. We are a faith-based movement to restore the nation to God. We believe in our hearts that that is what we have been missing in Liberia and we have purposed ourselves to make sure that we not only have God the center, but we have him in front and we also have him in back. So when you think about the Liberia Restoration Party, you will think also about God. Not only God, but also the Liberian people. I'm going to be introducing to you today my esteemed Vice Standard Bearer, Ms. Nuzbet Weir, Ambassador Nuzbet Weir, and I will give an overview of my platform. So let me start with the introduction of my Vice Standard Bearer. I had criteria for what I wanted in a Vice Standard Bearer. I wanted somebody who loved the Lord because when you love the Lord, it comes with humility and it comes with sacrifice, it comes with a check in your spirit. You won't come into power and change. You will be humble because you know who you are depending on. I wanted someone who loved Liberia because you don't destroy something that you love. You nurture it, you protect it, you grow it, you sacrifice for it. I wanted somebody who had professional competence. I wanted someone who had character and personal integrity. I wanted someone who had compassion in their hearts for others. I wanted a female. I wanted someone who was between 35 and 45. I got some I got I got that in the person of Newsvet Weir, but I got so much more than I even expected. Not only does she possess these qualities, but she's more than capable of handling any leadership situation. She worked for 10 years with Orange heading the media department, so probably some of you know her. She, she, she did a fabulous job there. She was promoted three times. She is a steward in her church, and she has been that. She is a pastor. She has examples of where she has been involved in helping people. And we are very, very pro, um, we are very uh, supportive of women. And the only way that I felt I could demonstrate that was to get a lady as a candidate. Now, the Bible is clear for those, it says when you wait on the Lord, the Lord renews your strength. It took a lot of time to get her and a lot of prayers to get her. And the truth of the matter is that 72 hours before the deadline, that is when the Lord revealed who he had for this nation. You can imagine that I was getting anxious at that time because the deadline was 72 hours away. And you, <laughs> and what did I do, what I did, was I went and got my own candidate. And you know, in God's permissible will, he allows that, and he approved my candidate. But I didn't stop there. 
I kept looking for another candidate based on the advice of my esteemed chairman, Gabriel Selly. So we got the candidate. I'm so happy for that. And I don't want to, 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 to keep speaking more about her because this that just speaking about her would be an entire news press conference. What I want to do now is to start on our on our platform. The Liberia Restoration Party. As I said before, we are faith-based movement to restore the nation to God. We are inclusive with respect to this agenda. As long as you believe in God, you are a part of us. And this is different from government. This is, as a party, what we're talking about, the movement. In government, as long as you're Liberian, you have constitutional rights. And irrespective of your belief, we will respect those constitutional rights and we will protect every citizen in this country as a Liberian with respect to your constitutional rights. Now we believe that the redemption of Liberia is here and we believe that it starts with the children. We want to see children become children again, to grow up in an environment of love, innocence, integrity, responsibility, and discipline. Broken children become broken adults, and they create a broken society. However, if you train a child in the way he should go, when that child is older, he won't depart from it. So we are saying that if we create that environment, that our children won't depart from it. We are confident about that. I have a soft spot in my heart when it comes to children and when it comes to suffering of the nation for everybody. But I don't believe a child should wake up in the morning hungry and I don't believe a child should go to bed at night hungry. They didn't ask to come here. It's our responsibility to do that. Then, we start to talk about the youth of this country. We have to empower our youth. They are the future. So we start with giving them economic empowerment. What does that mean? Providing jobs for them and giving them the option to do business. Creating those incentives for them. Educational opportunities. Opportunities in sports. Opportunities in music. Opportunities in art. Opportunities wherever they have a passion or whatever, in whatever area they're passionate about. We should give them the opportunities and allow them to earn a living doing whatever it is that they love. And when we do that for our youth, we put them on the path to be of, of a productive life. Now, our platform is about God, and our platform is about Liberia. We believe that the greatest resource that Liberia has is our people. It's our most underutilized and underdeveloped resource. And what we are going to do is we are going to resource our people. So when you think about our administration, it will be thinking about God and thinking about the empowerment of our people. And we, and we expect fully that those of you who are here, some of you today, will be developed to the point where you will be partly surprised winners, winning journalist awards internationally because we will be pushing your professional development. But not only you, engineers, lawyers, accountants, bankers, athletes, we're going to be looking to develop all of you. And we believe that there is no reason why 
Liberians cannot excel in Liberia and out of Liberia to the point that they are shining stars in the world and giving a good representation for our country. We are into stability. We are into respect for others. I have been very clear that I will not criticize the current administration. I should say we have been clear that we will not criticize the current administration nor will we criticize administrations previous to this administration. I will expand on that a little. We are not going to criticize other candidates. We are going to be about our message of God and our message of people empowerment. That is going to be our centerpiece with emphasis on our children. Not only children, but also youth, and also not only economic empowerment, but social empowerment as well. Why? Because we want to make sure that when we have a buoyant economy, that as the economy rises, our Liberian people rise also. In 2006, 2004 actually, I started investing and I invested millions of dollars in hospitality and in real estate in Liberia. And I had an interview in 2006 with a news organization called All Africa. At that time, I spoke about the need for a middle class. And this is what we are going to be pushing. We believe, now, now, now the Bible is clear, the poor will always be with us, but the Bible does not say that the majority of people have to be poor. So in this country, we believe that the path to the future and a bright future is to have a middle class where people can feed, clothe, shelter themselves and their families. We will be doing everything that we can to make this a reality. And we believe that you, the Liberian people, will help us. In terms of health care, we don't believe that our people should have to go abroad to get adequate medical care. We are going to work tirelessly and diligently to make sure that our health care system is on par with other developed countries. With respect to education, we want, to, we want to create a system that is culturally sensitive. For example, when I was learning to read, I would read Dick and Jean books, and it would say Dick and Jean played in the snow. Now, I never saw snow before, and <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in all honesty, <laughs> you know, it, it didn't resonate with me. So we need to hear about Flomo and Tufa playing blade in the rain. Why is that essential? Because it gives our children a sense of identity. It gives them an appreciation of who they are and a strong sense of nationalism when they ought to have that. Does this mean that we are not internationalists also? No. But we just want to say that in the context of appreciating other nationals, we should also appreciate the uniqueness of our culture. I'm so happy to finally be here talking to you today because it gives us an opportunity to express so many other things, such as our interest in electricity and water. We believe that there should be affordable electricity and water 
throughout the length and breadth of this country because there is a correlation between inaccessibility to water, affordable electricity and water, and poverty. And there is no way that we are going to be able to create a middle class, the middle class that I spoke about as far back as 2006, if we don't have the simple infrastructure needs of electricity and water throughout the length and breadth of this nation. And not only that, but we also need to have a road network that allows every village to be accessible, allows farmers to be able to take their produce to market. What happens is in a lot of, in a lot of situations is that they farm, but they lose value because they're unable to get their produce to market. I don't think that's right, and I believe that it is necessary to have the road networks that allows them to earn a living, a decent living. We believe strongly in the rule of law. Justice should be dispensed without fear, without favor, and with compassion. This can be challenging because we live in a very interrelated society. Everybody knows somebody who knows somebody else who knows who you want to see or who you want to talk to. When there is a convict who is contrite, that's the pathway to compassion. And an example of that is, say there's someone who has a murder sentence, who has a death penalty sentence, but they are contrite. The mercy and compassion that we can show is to commute that sentence to life imprisonment. Justice is still served, but they're in jail for life. What happens if we have someone who is not contrite, who has no sorrow and has committed a capital and heinous crime. So in that situation, we're dealing with an incorrigible felon and we have no recourse except to exact an action that's consistent with the laws of the Republic of Liberia. But this is always as a last resort. And we will have to set an example with that type of individual when that time comes. We won't draw back from it. We are not going to burden future generations with decisions that we can make. We won't do that. And as we're making decisions, we will always keep in mind that these decisions must be sensible and substantive, uh, and substantive, a hundred, two hundred, a thousand, two thousand years from today, so that future generations look back and say, "Hey, you know, some leaders were thinking about us. Some leaders were thinking about making our lives better." I think that the Liberia Restoration Party is an example of selflessness. And you will find that we will lead with love, with forgiveness, with humility, with inclusion. And we will be creative and innovative and unconventional in terms of the policies that we will want to effect. And with that said, we want to talk about agriculture and manufacturing, the service industry, technology, and climate. 
So let's start with the simple one, agriculture. What we want in terms of a policy is to make sure that a single acre of our land has the highest yield on planet Earth for whatever we grow. If we do that, focusing on agriculture alone, our people become wealthy because Liberia becomes a wealthy nation. Then there's manufacturing. And we are talking about the global economy. We are going to be producing for exports and producing for the global economy because by doing so, what we do is resolve any issues in our local economy. So when it comes to manufacturing, we're thinking about global and we're thinking about manufacturing products that can be global, that can be <coughs> bought on the global market. And take for example, a simple thing like tomatoes. So we add value and we make ketchup. And we export ketchup as opposed to importing ketchup. And we look for countries right around us. Ivory Coast, Ghana, Guinea, Nigeria. And what we do, we send our ketchup. And I'm only using ketchup as an example. There could be a, a zillion other examples. We grow oranges here. Let's look at orange juice. We should be exporting that. And the interesting thing is this. This country, in my observation, is that we have buried a lot of talents and a lot of brains. And when we haven't buried them, we've marginalized so many of our people. But the truth is that we have the talent right here. We have the brains right here to make Liberia great. We have that. And I'll give you an example. My vice president, my vice standard bearer, my vice standard bearer is an amazing talent. She has never served in government before. I have never served in government before. But what I will say about her is that she's someone who never aspired to serve in government. And that's going to be like most other people that will be recruited into our administration. There will be people who never thought that they will serve, but they are fundamentally sound and talented. And they are people whose time has come. Because we have the human capacity right in Liberia. We have it. I've seen it. She is a clear example of it. I remember when I announced her. I got so many texts. But one of the texts that I got said, she's the best candidate of a vice president. And I was about to respond. And just as I was about to respond, I remembered that I didn't really choose her. <laughs> that the Lord brought who he wanted. I was just blessed with the grace to wait. So when I responded, I said, you know something? I gave God his glory, you know, because I'm not going to get, I'm not going to lose focus. I'm going to continue to be led by him. And I know that when we are led by God, that we will be a great nation. We have seen the greatest democracy on planet Earth. We look at the money every day, the $100 bill, and what do we see? In God we trust. This is the United States of America. This is the dominant currency in the world. What does that tell us? It tells us if that nation, the greatest nation on the planet, 
if they can put on their money openly before all creation, all mankind, that we are relying on God, then why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we bring God into our equation too? And work on that grace to be great. With that, I'm going to give my esteem vice standard bearer an opportunity to make remarks. And when she makes remarks, it will affirm my confidence in her. Thank you so much. To the Ladera Television, coming live to you from the head office of the Library Restoration Party. standard barrier of the library reservation by T.